Hey guys, this is Jonathan from Fitness for Freedom. Today we are going to go through the top five mistakes that people make when they strength train their core. The biggest mistake people make is that they have a tendency to do the same two or three exercises, which is almost always some variation of sit up or crunch. So they'll go in and they'll do either a crunch like this where they come up or they'll do a sit up. Maybe they'll do a twist at the top like that or like they saw in a Rocky movie or something like that. Okay. So the problem when you're strength training your core or your abdomen only in that one way is that you're only developing one aspect or one component of it. And that's your uh, rectus abdominis or six pack muscle. Okay. Which is fine for your six pack. But if you're trying to be a more functional person or you're trying to get stronger in other ways so you can be just an overall stronger person like improving your deadlift and your squats your pull-ups things like that then it's very important that you strength train your core in other different ways so how i want you to think about it is strength training in terms of planes of motion so if you were to cut your body this way that's a sagittal plane of motion so you should be doing exercises in that direction which are like the sit-ups and the crunches now i don't necessarily like those as those i don't like sit-ups and crunches because um although they do strength train your your um, abdominal muscles, your six pack muscle, they're not necessarily very spine friendly. So I don't really like those, but doing um, like front planks or uh, dragonflies, things like that, they can really train the same muscle group in a more spine friendly way, okay? So that's one way. The other way is cross body, okay? Like this on the frontal plane of motion from side to side. And these are the side planks, side leans, or stability solid stability ball side lean exercises, okay? So adding those in to your workout in some way will really strengthen your oblique muscles. And then also we have the uh, transverse plane of motion. So that's across body. So uh, the most common one that I'll see people do is the wood chopper exercise, okay? So thinking about um, pulling the resistance across your body on this plane of motion. So you have to use your obliques again and your quartes lumborum in a slightly different way, slightly more effective way will help you become a more functional person and a stronger person overall. The second biggest mistake that most people make when doing core exercises is they let their hips twist around a lot, especially when they're doing a horizontal pulling or um, spine stabilization exercises. Okay. So if we're doing this, our cable axe chopper, cable wood chopper, and we're twisting our body like this, again, we're not using our core muscles very well. So we, if we keep our hips nice and stable as we pull that weight across, then you're going to use your abdominal muscles a lot more. Now, another, um, uh, exercise where I see this happen a lot is the V-sit twist where people will set up in a good starting position V-sit twist but then when they do the exercise they'll let their hips swing way out to the side like this and they'll just look like like crazy fast and be doing this wild exercise and sure that looks good if you're holding a 45 pound weight but you're not doing anything to strength train your abdominal muscles so it's a lot better if you can keep your hips nice and stable as you tip or move from side to side and I think you'll notice that you'll be able to do a lot less weight and you'll feel a much bigger burn uh, in your abdominal muscles. And the next biggest offender where people do this exercise is a plank rotation or a plank out where they're in this sort of a position here where they're doing something like tapping and then they'll twist their hips up like this when they tap. And that's probably because they're just not quite strong enough to do the exercise properly. Okay, so instead of um, t letting your hips move around, widen your feet a little bit, get a nice uh, wide uh, base of support and then every time you tap out, really focus on resisting that rotation as you do the exercise. And by resisting, by resisting that rotation, you're going to do a much better job at targeting your abdominal muscles. The number three biggest mistake that I see people make is that they will overload with reps, but not resistance, okay? So your abdominal muscles are a muscle just like every other muscle in your body. And if you're, so if you're lifting to become stronger in a certain area, you'll normally lift in the rep range of six to eight reps. So if you're doing a chest press or a bench press or something like that, you might even go, you might even go, go lower than that. If you're straining for strength, you might even do two to four repetitions instead, but then you'll turn around and you'll want stronger abdominal muscles, but you'll do 15 repetitions or 30 or 40 sit-ups, for example, uh, or you'll hold a plank for two minutes um, instead of really overloading the muscle. Uh, so my recommendation is instead of uh, overloading with reps, overload with weight, okay? So by increasing the resistance when you do an exercise, like for example, if we're going to do this corkscrew exercise here, okay, where we push our hips 
right up, that's going to be a much, a much harder exercise if I'm loaded with weight and I'm only going to be able to do maybe eight to 10 repetitions, okay, instead of like 20 or 30. And by overloading your muscle with weight, you're going to stimulate it to grow and you're effectively going to make it look bigger. And I know a lot of people would like to have abdominal muscles that show a little bit. So in order to increase the size of that abdominal muscle, then overloading it um, with weight is going to be really important when you're trying to stimulate it to grow. The number four biggest mistake that I see people make when they do core exercises is that they have a tendency to use their neck when they're doing their exercises, okay? So this is especially prevalent in the sit-up or the crunch where someone coming up will lead with their neck and their chin, okay, towards their chest and they'll really do this, okay? So what that does is we're putting a lot of tension and a lot of stress in our traps and our neck and where that's actually taking it off of our abdominal muscles, okay? And it's also ingraining an incorrect movement pattern by needing to use your neck muscles before you can use your abdominal muscles. So what I recommend uh, instead of bearing down with your, with your jaw is to look up at the ceiling and do the exercise while you're talking or with your mouth open, okay? By looking at the ceiling and keeping your mouth open or talking at the same time, then what that does is it makes it a lot harder for you to use your neck muscles. Now, uh, I don't like sit-ups, so that's not a great example, but let's go back to our wood, our wood chopper example, okay? where we're pulling across. So a lot of people will really flex their neck muscles and bring their chin down, but if you look up and keep your mouth more open or exhale with a wide jaw as you're pulling the weight or the resistance across your body, then what that's going to do is it's going to make it a lot easier for you to engage your, your core muscles. So that's just something I want you to be cognizant of as you're doing your core exercises. The fifth biggest mistake that people make when doing their core exercises is that they neglect functional core strength. So what I mean by that is they don't do functional core exercises like farmer's carries or squats or deadlifts. They do um, crunches, they do sit-ups, they'll do side planks and front planks, which don't get me wrong, those are all good exercises, but if you're trying to build functional strength, it's really important that you do an exercise like the farmer's walk, okay? Because you have to use your muscles to really stabilize your spine as you're doing it. Or if you want to get a little bit more advanced, you can do an exercise like the suitcase carry, which is the exact same movement, but on one side. Uh, or maybe you wanna do some sort of a sandbag carry or a weighted carry, okay? Where you hold the weight on your chest. And what this does is it loads your core in all these different ways that allow you to, um, that allow you to strength train it, okay? Um, and lastly, if you want to get really functional with it, something like the single leg RDL, where you're coming down like this and then standing up tall again, okay? This is really good for the anti-rotation aspect of your spine when you do it properly, and it helps strength train your glutes at the same time. So being able to get a lot more functional in your core strength, uh, core strengthening program will make you an overall much stronger person. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any comments or questions about core strengthening or conditioning, please leave them in the comments box below. Take care, and we'll talk to you next time.